Hi guys and welcome to another Bootstrap 4 tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we're going to continue on today with our Bootstrap Basics theme. We've put together this little site, built it from scratch, just started off with an empty folder. We built our index.html file, which is what we're looking at here, and a custom CSS file and added a logo and just demonstrated some background images if you wanted to do that with the menu up there. Well today, let's make these menu items our own. The link's in the menu up here. Let's do something a little more interesting with them. Uh, the other day I showed you how to position them uh, left, center, or right. I'm gonna reposition these in the center and then we'll start customizing them and giving them a hover effect, etc. So let's get started. I'm using Brackets Text Editor today. Any text editor will do. Uh, if you haven't got one, you can download the brackets from a link below this video. It's absolutely free and it's got some great features if you need a text editor. Okay, well here's our menu. We're in our HTML, index HTML file here. Here's our main menu, the nav. Select the top one, it'll show you the nav closing tag. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, if we look at it, we've got three regular links and a disabled link, which does nothing. I'm going to get rid of that and just make a couple more. At the moment, none of these go anywhere. But as we add more pages to the site or sections, we'll start linking these to places we want to go. But for the time being, I'm going to make them into more active links. So if we go back to our brackets, I look down here we can see our disabled one and it's got the disabled attribute there which is making it not actually work which is fine so I'm going to copy this pricing one just above it opening list item tag closing list item tag from the beginning to the end there control C to copy I'm going to paste it over that disabled one and I'm going to add say what we got there one more there we go. I'll just pull that back to tidy it up. Okay. Now they all say pricing, so let's just change the names. They've actually got a link in there. If you look at the href, it's a hashtag, which all that's going to do is if you click on it, take you to back to the top of the page. So I'm doing these at random. I'm not putting a lot of thought into this. Obviously, when you design a site, you'll have a guideline, or hopefully, <laughs> services about us and contact control s to save when I refresh we should have a couple more here and those should have changed there we go home features pricing service about us contact so there's a few to be going on with what I'm going to do first is I think I'm going to put these back in the middle here then space them out a little bit more. So if we go back to our brackets, I mentioned this the other day how to do this. So what we want to do is we want to go to our navbar collapse which is right here which is all of our links. And in the class between the two inverted commas there I'm going to justify the contents to the center. justify dash content dash center that should pull our menu to the middle of our screen there or the middle of the div that it's in so if I refresh now this should pop over here there we go and it's sort of in the middle of the available space that we have if you want it dead center you could margin negative margin left and pull it over a bit if you wanted to but for the time being that's fine with me okay so the first thing that we want to do with this is I think I want to space these out a little bit more so they're not so close together and have something happen when we hover over them and also on the active page whichever page we're on I want something to happen to show that it's the active page 
it is a little bit darker there the active but I want it to stand out a little bit more so let's start with that if I right click and hit inspect on here I'm using Google Chrome with the Chrome inspector and it's going to bring up our HTML and our CSS here if we look over here at my nav and when you hover over it it highlights it in blue we gave that an extra class name of my nav so we can actually target stuff within that nav bar and if we look at the thing we inspected it's an anchored link so we'd be targeting my nav the class name and the anchor tag within it which is a so it'd be my nav a so let's do that and what I want to what I want to happen is I'll actually do it in the thing here so we can use it let's perhaps give it a bit of extra space I'll give it an extra margin on the right of say 20 pixels and that will spread those out a little bit and remember see those are spread out a little bit could even do a little bit more let's say 30 pixels Remember, when you do it in the Chrome like this, it's non-destructive. You're not actually really affecting your site. So as soon as you hit that refresh button, everything that you've done over here will go back to as it was. All right, that's fine. So we'll start with that. So it's dot my nav class always has a dot or a period before it. So it would be dot my nav a and we'll Put this bit of code in there so i'm going to just select that and copy it control c to copy i'm going to go back to our brackets and to our custom css now we've already got a navbar declaration title there so i'm going to just put it up underneath and we said the class name was just double check my nav i believe my nav so it's dot my nav and we're targeting the anchor tag or the a tag now we just need to open and close some curly brackets give it a bit of space and paste in that bit of code in between now I'll just pull it back a little bit I'm hitting shift tab to move it to the left save that control s Okay, when I go back and I refresh, this should stay exactly the same. Well, actually, it'll put it between all of those tags there. We've refreshed now. And as you can see, each of these tags has now got 30 pixels in between. Great. So the next thing I want it to do is when we hover over it, I will perhaps want to have it a little line appear underneath it so let's figure that out again I'm on the a the anchor tag itself rather than the actual nav so I'm gonna say let's give it a border on the bottom of two picks border bottom and I'm gonna say two pixels and we're gonna give it solid border so we it's just a straight line now we've got to give it a color so I'm going to say hashtag I'm going to try and use the same color as we got for this blue in the middle of this logo here which I happen to know is 181174 of course it's crossed this out because I didn't finish the entry here Just put that in there there we go there it is there's a little line right there now I only want that to appear either when it's active or when we hover over it so I want it to appear when we hover over those things so I'm going to copy this bit of code again select left click and drag control C to copy and again we're affecting just the A not the actual nav item itself and in a minute there's a class of active that we'll work on and do the same thing for so let's go back to our custom CSS 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste that bit of code that I copied in right there. That's got nothing around it, so that's incorrect at the moment. I'm going to copy this whole thing, MyNav A, and just make it into a hover command. So Control C, drop it down. And after the A, with no gap, I'm going to put a colon, not a semicolon, a colon, and then write the word hover with no gap. It's important you don't put a gap in there. So it's A, no gap, colon, no gap, hover. So that'll tell it to do something when we hover over it. Now I'm just going to get this little bit of code, I'm going to cut it, control X, and paste it over the top of what's in there. And save, control S. Let's go back to our site and refresh. That should disappear initially. There we go. Now when I hover over these, there we go. We've got that little line appearing. Very easy to do, nice little effect. Obviously you could do all kind of different things. You could actually have a whole background color. If I just select that. Let's find that bit of code. So what I wanna do is go over here, hit the hover button, select the hover box. There it is, there's that bit of code right there. Uh, if you just wanted the background color, the whole background color to change, you can give it background. And that same color or whatever color you want, 181174. And you have to actually make the, the link color itself. If I drop down one more, the link color itself white so you could see it through there. So you just do color, FFF. Some people like these sort of pills. There's, there's all kinds of different ways of doing this. I would have to say important there because it's trying to overwrite the what's there already. So I'll say important. There we go. And you know, that's another little effect you can have that way when you roll over it'll do this but I'm happy just to have our little lines that's just another little option for you so all we have to do is give it a background color and a color with the important class to make it actually work correctly and as I say this is non-destructive so you can just refresh and everything goes back to how it was with our written CSS so we've got our little line on hover there which is exactly what I want but I also want when when the page is active I want to have the little blue line there as well so when I mentioned before remember that active class you see active it's not on any of the other ones it's only on the one that is the page we're on so we can target that class with exactly the same thing so it'll be active a active a active and we're targeting that anchor tag so it'll be active a let's go ahead and do that i'm going to drop down one and it's dot for a class or period active and a and what do we want it to do well we want it to have the same basically as the hover state so if I copy that our border control s to save back to the site let's get rid of our inspector refresh now home should automatically have that line underneath it there we go because we're on the active page and when we create a new page for features we'll make features the active link and it'll have the line underneath it. If we look at our index HTML here, all we need to do on the active page, we'll copy this page over when we build that page and we'll take the active class away from this first one and put it on whatever page we're working on, features, pricing, services, whichever one, and that will cause that line to happen up there. 
which is great. There's one more little thing we can do before we finish this video. Of course, you can color these links exactly how you want them as well. So if we want to use that same blue on these links, all we'll do is go back to our CSS. And where we put my nav A margin right, we'll have to give it that same blue color if that's what you want. So I'm just going to say color, colon, hashtag, and it's 1811.74 for that blue, and a little semicolon after it. But I'm going to have to put that class of important, like we've done up here. In fact, I'll just copy that because it's already got a style associated with it and we need to overwrite that. So let's just save that, control S. And all this CSS I'll put down below the video, so don't squint and try and copy it if you don't have to. You're welcome to use it, manipulate it how you want. Let's just refresh this. There we go, and I don't know if you can see that, but they've all turned that blue color there. Of course, we could have it doing a different color when we hover over it, however you like to do it. Okay, the other thing that I really wanted to do now, can't really tell, but when we hover over that, there's a slight jump, just a real slight jump. You might not even be able to see it, and that's because this bottom border is taking up two pixels of real estate. And it's causing that nav bar to expand by two pixels every time we hover over it. So what we can do is in the regular state, not the hover state, we can add a border so it's still actually there taking that real estate. But we can either make it white so you can't see it. Or we can make it transparent so again you can't see it. So that way that real estate is still taken up and it's just going to change colour. Like I say, you probably can't even see that but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So what we'll do, go back to our CSS. And I'm going to copy this border bottom, control C. And it's on the my nav A again. I'm going to just drop this down. And instead of having that color there, I can either make it F to make it white or just simply call it transparent. T-R-A-N-S-P-A-R-E-N-T. -E and save it that way. Control S to save, refresh, there we go, we still got our hover effect but it's not jumping. Like I say it's so slight, it's only two picks you may not have been able to see that but if you're experiencing that, especially you have, if you have a thicker border at the bottom, then uh, you can get rid of it that way. So there you have it, I'm going to leave it there, we could push our menu over to the left a bit. But we'll do that in the next video and what we'll do again in the next video is we'll segregate some of these and we'll have some on the right side and some on the left side and decorate the ones on the right side a little differently. But that'll do for today. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, share, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free web development courses. We've also got some premium courses down there with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.